Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Episode 4 of the final season of The Clone Wars was released on Friday, titled Unfinished Business, and man, it had a lot of action packed into it. I enjoyed this episode much more so than last week's, so let's break it down. The episode begins, and Echo and the gang are back at the Republic's base on an axis, after his harrowing rescue last week. Unfortunately, Echo's previous time held by the Separatists have left the Bad Batch questioning his true loyalties. We then see Mace Windu, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, Rex, and the Bad Batch are at the Battle Center planning their next move against the Separatists. They're hoping that the Republic troops will now have the upper hand as Admiral Trench no longer has the algorithm to rely on. Echo believes that he is their best option to help the Republic reclaim an axis even if Rex believes he is still unfit for duty. Echo's plan is to have Mace bring a team to retake the droid assembly complex on an axis, while Echo and the Bad Batch infiltrate Trench's new communications vault on his Separatist dreadnought above an axis. Once Echo plugs into the communication system using his new scomp link that's replaced his hand, he says he will be able to relay battle plans to Admiral Trench, as Trench is still not aware that Echo has escaped the Techno Union, while also being able to inform the Jedi and Republic forces Trench's strategies, effectively getting Trench to act in the Republic forces' best interest during the battle. Mace questions if Echo will actually be able to get them to do what they want, but Echo is fully confident that he can lead them to victory. As the Bad Batch, Rex, and crew are getting ready to leave the base, Tech is still unsure of how they're actually going to get on the Dreadnought, but Rex assures him that Echo has a plan. Tech doesn't believe, however, that Echo can be fully trusted as he was a tool of the Separatists until they unplugged him. As the mission gets underway, Anakin, Rex, Echo, and the Bad Batch head to the Dreadnought aboard the Havoc Marauder. There's a great little back and forth with Wrecker and Anakin about how Wrecker just wants to blow everything up, but Anakin reminds him this is strictly a stealth mission. Echo's plan to get them on the Dreadnought is that he's going to plug in to the Havoc Marauder's computer system using his scomp link and send Trench's Dreadnought a signal to disguise the type of ship they're on. He's going to make the droids think that they're just another transport shuttle. As our heroes are closing in on Trench's Dreadnought, a couple of droids ask if they've seen this model before as the Havoc Marauder is still showing up on their scans. But Echo quickly uploads the data that disguises the Havoc Marauder as Shuttle TC-159. The Bad Batching Company attached to the Dreadnought as Mace, Obi-Wan, and the clones begin their attack on the assembly plant, bombing the hell out of it. I love this scene of the Republic forces flying towards the assembly plant as their gunships and fighters are taking flak. Seriously, so cool. Mace orders some Y-Wings, gold team to be exact, to bomb the plant. From there, we see that Trench believes the Jedi are being foolish and arrogant in bombing the factory, but little does he know that the Republic forces have an ace up their sleeve. Anakin and the clones quickly find the communications vault and set up an interface for Echo to plug into. In the meantime, Trench is contacting Skako Miner to use the algorithm to calculate a counterattack on the droid assembly plan still unaware that Echo has escaped from the Techno Union, since in the last episode, Watt Tambor wanted to hide that information from him, basically because the Techno Union wouldn't get paid. As Echo plugs in, he can see the algorithm request from Trench. Tech sets it up so that any signals Echo sends look like they'll actually be originating from Skako Minor. Meanwhile, Mace and Obi-Wan are dropped off over the assembly plant and they drop through the glass ceiling to surprise the droids below. Mace tells all the droids on the assembly floor that he has destroyed over 100,000 of them and that now is their opportunity to drop their weapons and they'll be reprogrammed to serve a better purpose. My man Mace, dude is tripping here. Gotta love it. As expected, the droids immediately begin shooting. There's a really cool sequence of the clones being lowered into the factory from gunships above, ready to join Mace and Obi-Wan as all hell breaks loose. Trench finally gets his algorithm recommendation back, and it says that he should mobilize all troops on an axis and send them to the assembly complex, as the Republic won't send any reinforcements and will put all of their faith in the Jedi. Tech, however, is worried when he sees that Trench is sending all of his droids 
droids to the complex. Echo explains that this is exactly what he told him to do. His plan is to send a feedback pulse that will shut down all the droids once they're in the same place. Tech still doesn't fully trust this plan though. We cut back to the scene in the assembly plant and things are still looking crazy. There are clones and jetpacks flying all around to take out droids and Mace and Obi-Wan are still inundated by the Separatist forces. Mace lets Obi-Wan know that he just heard from Anakin that there are more droids on the way. Trench is feeling confident that the droids will soon overwhelm the Jedi. As the new droids arrive in the complex, Echo sends a pulse through the communication tower that essentially short circuits all the droids in the plant. Mace and Obi-Wan report that they now have control of the complex and that the other fronts are also falling to Republic favor. Trench is confused with how wrong the algorithm was, but then his super tactical droid informs him that the algorithm signal wasn't from Skako Minor, but it actually originated within their ship. He dispatches security droids and then says that he has his own plan, which is total annihilation of an axis. We then find out that there is a bomb hidden at the assembly complex. Anakin runs off to find Trench on the Dreadnought while Mace goes to search the complex for the bomb. As he descends into the depths of the complex, notice that reactor core? In Return of the Jedi, Lando Calrissian, Nine Nub, and Wedge Antilles were able to destroy the second Death Star by blowing up the same type of reactor core. Pretty cool easter egg. Meanwhile, clone troopers start evacuating Anaxis and Mace finds the bomb in the basement with a ray shield around it. Echo is able to find the number sequence which will deactivate the bomb and relays the info to Mace, one number at a time. Mace is able to use the force and move the knobs on the bomb one by one to try to deactivate it. Trench's super tactical droid is able to locate where the Bad Batch currently is hiding and sends an electronic pulse through the communication vault that knocks Echo unconscious. Rex informs Mace that Echo is now unconscious and can't give him the last number to disarm the bomb. Mace then instructs the Bad Batch to leave immediately. As they're leaving, a squad of B2 super battle droids finds them and a fight ensues. As this is happening, Trench believes that the Jedi have failed, that he will detonate the bomb and the Republic will lose all of their clones on an axis. As Trench is briefing his super technical droids on their plans, Anakin has found them and surprises Trench on the bridge. Anakin wipes out all the droids protecting Trench and puts his lightsaber to Trench's neck, demanding that he tell Anakin the bomb sequence. Trench refuses to give Anakin the final number to disarm the bomb, as Dooku would kill him if he loses an axis. Anakin incredulously states, and you think I won't. Trench replies that Anakin is a Jedi, that he's noble but Anakin then slices off half of Trench's three cybernetic arms and growls that he has no such weaknesses, demanding the final number of the sequence. Couple of thoughts I had during this scene. As Anakin told Trench that he doesn't have such weaknesses, I was reminded of the Citadel story arc from season 3 where Anakin and Tarkin are speaking to one another as they're escaping the Citadel prison. Tarkin tells Anakin that he believes the Jedi Code prevents the Jedi from taking the necessary steps that are needed to win the war. Anakin actually agreed with Tarkin, remarking that he often found that the Jedi fall short of victory because of their methods. It's interesting to see how this war has affected Anakin's viewpoint on handling situations he finds himself in, and how he is inching slowly and slowly towards the dark side. But anyway, from there we see Obi-Wan encourages Mace to leave immediately if he does not have the final number. Mace states that this is not an option, and that he'll guess the final number if he has to. Anakin then chimes in, stating that Trench gave him the final number, allowing Mace to disarm the bomb and save an axis. We cut back to Anakin and Trench, and as Anakin is turned away, Trench electrocutes him. Anakin whips around and drives his lightsaber through Trench's chest. Anakin reveals no emotion whatsoever as he walks over to the computer and pops up a little detonation fob. He comments that Wrecker is going to love this as Trench stumbles and falls, twitching as he dies. We then cut back to the Bad Batch as they're trying to get back to the Havoc Marauder and escape. Wrecker takes this opportunity to release the Wrecking Ball and single-handedly takes out a hallway full of droids. Not to be outdone, when more droids arrive, 
Crosshair says he'll buy them some time. He takes out some droids and then starts sticking little discs to the wall as he moves through them. Anakin joins the Bad Batch at the infiltration point, as Crosshair finally joins back up with them as well. As the droids show up, Crosshair shoots the last reflective disc he placed. His blaster bolt ricochets off of the discs all the way down the hallways, taking out all the droids as it goes. This sequence was seriously so damn cool. When they're flying away in the Havoc Marauder, Anakin tells Wrecker that he has a present for him and hands over the detonation fob. Wrecker is so excited that he gets to blow the whole thing up, stating that it's the happiest day of his life with tears in his eyes. He then clicks the fob and we see all of the ships in the Separatist fleet blow up one by one. Couldn't help but get a laugh from this moment. Our heroes then return to the Republic base on an axis and Mace tells Rex, Echo, and Clone Force 99 that they've done a great service to the Republic and that many accolades are on their way. Hunter asks Echo if he's sure that the clone thing is his thing. Hunter believes that Echo's path is different, like theirs, and extends an offer to Echo for him to join the Bad Batch. Rex then comes up to Echo and tells him that Clone Force 99 are some of the best clones he's ever fought with, and that if Echo feels he needs to join them, then that's where he belongs. As Rex turns away, you can see the emotion and sadness in his eyes. We can see over Rex's shoulder that Echo walks over to the Bad Batch. After a brief conversation, Echo and Rex turn to face each other. Echo puts up his arm to salute Rex, as one by one, the Bad Batch join in that salute to Rex. This episode was such a great way to complete the arc. There were some really great action sequences, some cool parallels and foreshadowing in Anakin's turn to the dark side, some funny moments, some oh crap moments, it was just a really fun arc. What I also thought was interesting is seeing Rex in a somewhat similar situation as we see Anakin in Revenge of the Sith. By that I mean wanting to save someone that he cares about, doing whatever he could to save them. However, the key difference was that when the time came for Rex to let go of his friend Echo, he was able to do so, unlike Anakin and Padme, and I really enjoyed that. Last week had me ready to move on from this story arc, and this week made me eat those words completely. Also, I'm wondering if that bomb that Mace deactivated still went off at some point later on in the timeline, as we know from Star Wars Rebels that some sort of cataclysmic event transpired, turning the planet into an asteroid belt. So maybe that's something that we'll be learning down the line. But what did you guys think of this episode and this story arc as a whole? What were your favorite Bad Batch moments? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's on Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.